Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's the fastest shit. Yeah, um, this is the low road. Uh, I'm sorry, you ready? This is the low road episode 18, number 18. I signed it on the wall, the wall of heroes over here that my guest has. Uh, for my millions and millions of fans and followers, who do I have here? My name Jay. Jay. DJ. With the big glass. With the big glass. The big, the big, what big you, glass. What do you call it again? I call it the, uh, the one, um, the one wine bottle glass. I got it from David Buster's. That's a serving size. Yes. At this point. Shout out David Buster's for the big ass glass. And so Jay was nice enough. To have me in her home to uh, bless me with my 18th interview. Um, so, get my notes out here. Before I do that, did you want some of this? Oh, yeah. This Espon. What do you want? You want it just straight? He, yeah, let me get some of this straight. He came you with want, the Espon straight. Do you want to just tap the bottle? You could just, you can do whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm going to do, do it in a glass. <laughs> Very fancy. Very fancy. There you go. I'll drink tequila around this mm. way. Mm. I smoke. Where are we at right now? You got me driving over here. This is the east side part. I don't, I don't come we're, where we at. We're on a hush hush, but we're on the east side of Cleveland. Uh, Not east uh, Cleveland, but we are up the way. Up what they the consider. way. We are up the way. That's yeah. what they call that. Yeah, up the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Yo, it's cool. It's actually, I, I'm never over here um, during the daytime, only the night. And this shit's actually like way pretty. The fucking trees and shit. Okay, Jay. So how'd you get your rap name, Jay? So just your name, Jay. Okay, so how I got my name was okay. So my real name is Rajay. Rajay, very pretty. Yes, thank you. Um, mm-hmm. so it's spelled R E J A I. R E J A I. Yeah. So I just took off the re, and just left J. And then boom. Boom. But I actually just was thinking like today, like I'm thinking about like, and I hate the fact I gotta announce this to you. But I kind of want to like change my name. Yeah. Yeah, like. Do you have any like brainstorms? Um, it's still the same thing, but I actually want my name to be Name J. Like. I thought it was Name. Name. I want it to be Name J. Like you got the baby, you got little Bow Wow, little, little you got everything. little everything. Whoa, whoa! It's not little Bow Wow anymore. He's it's ba- Shad. He's Shad Moss. Moss. <laughs> You're making a great point, though. It's a yeah, lot of those. It's just, it's just a lot of those. I just... And what happened? You just woke up and you're like, you know what? Thought it today when I was smoking. Yeah. Thought about it today when I was smoking, yes. Okay, so okay, if you didn't change it to name J, did you have any other like backups? My my real name, because I've never heard my name ever. Rege is a very uncommon name. Mm. So I've never heard my name before. Like My mom thought that maybe I should you know, use my name. But I don't know. Like I, I think know. they're all good. Yeah, I th- I think so too. But I I think name J kind of like is different as fuck. Like it's really different. It stands out. And it stand out. It and then I've out. I've got announced as that. And then I got a lot of people that call me Ja. But I think if they see name J, they already know that it's gonna say that opposed to calling mm-hmm. me Ja. So it work. So I think I just say your, your Instagram's name J. Yeah, and right? it's like and yeah, it's J on SoundCloud. Yeah, and then it's J on the other streams. Yeah, right. Real name like real stage name is J, but on everywhere else is name J or names J. But I think I want to just make my name J. So with name name J. Yeah, my name is name J. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's funny to me. Like I don't know. I just feel like that's that's different and it's it's more standing out. That's it, it's funny because uh, I had Eggie over and I was like, yo, I think I'm gonna interview. Jay or is it? Shout name out Eggie Jay? son. Yeah, That's shout out Eggie. He was like, no, her name's name Jay. I was yeah. like, name name Jay or name Jay. So I got confused for a yeah, second. Yeah, like her name's Jay. Like, oh like, damn. Name Jay. Yeah. Or, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. And we're, uh, for my millions of fans as well, where are you from? Um, all over the place. Um, I'm from California right like now. Born. Yes. And um, I moved up here, uh, Long Beach, mm-hmm. and I moved up here when I was twelve. Yeah, like fond childhood memories of the west coast Um, market being in the market with my mom and my father down there was uh one of the things i can remember Uh, my auntie candy going to her house um being outside like they stayed inside these big ass like uh it was like apartment complex Mm -hmm. so like in the middle they had like um let's you know the little uh 
the tables with the chairs and they have like the umbrellas outside. Yeah. They used to have like a line of those and like the paths to get into the entrance inside the building on the outer part. And okay. I would like sit outside and color color books. Like I learned how to like remember old school coloring where you would like darken the outside part of it yeah, and then shade really it in you, light. When you really thought you were you, dope. Yeah, that's yeah. when I started doing shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that's, like, my biggest memories, like, for real, mm-hmm. for real. Just, like, like, kid stuff. Yeah, and when I came up here, it was kind of was like, oh, yeah, like, it's cool as fuck. Like, yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. people here really mm, mean but wavy. Mean mm-hmm. but subtle. I didn't, I didn't pick up a lot of traits on being mean since I didn't been here. You got to be a little mean. Yeah. To survive. So, oh, okay, when you were in, why did you guys move if it's not? anything too crazy you can't discuss Ooh, it is something hella crazy yeah. that i would i would love to discuss my mother got incarcerated so yeah sorry about and that. then it's Free cool her. and then um and then my, my dad or whatever like he uh ended up moving up here like he's staying in euclid now and shit mm-hmm. so yeah my mom's a g huh um uh Mm. No comment. No. Kind, kind of. It's okay. I got, I got she's some aunties a, and stuff that been locked up for like a, selling food stamps and like scamming like that. So that's not like the biggest G move. But we hit the jail sometimes in my family. There's nothing wrong with doing that though. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. People doing that right now what, with food stamps. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying like people doing get that caught, right though, now. Yeah, you get caught. It's kind of like damn. Mm-hmm. It's like damn. I, I gotta. I'm in here for the food stamps though. Right? right. It's like how much I owe. <laughs> That's what I'd be thinking, like, damn, how much I owe back? Mm. Opposed to they find yeah. you, they'll find you. Eventually. They find you. You got the address. It's the government. Yo. Hmm. Okay. Well, thank you Cut for sharing. Cut that part that. out. Look thank at you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing. No, that's real. Thank you. Some people are kind of like, I think they're afraid to share. Like, yeah. I wouldn't say it's a trauma, but that's something different, you know. So you moved up here. You're Twelve years old. Uh, do you have like brothers and sisters you moved with? Or were, um, I have an older brother. His name's Kari. Yeah. Is it uh, from your mom or is it? My mom. My mom got two kids. She has two kids. Child okay. mom Dukes. Ooh, she be popping babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does she, um, <laughs> is your brother still? My brother, Um, he actually doesn't even stay here anymore. He just moved. He stay in Florida now. Yeah. Shout out Kari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That nigga just moved, so. Good for him, man. Florida's crazy. Yeah, he work um, for Disney World. He's a fucking wielder and shit. So, oh, yeah? Yeah, like he fucking makes parts and, and animatronics and shit down there, so. Oh, well, shout out, bro. Him. Yeah, shout out to having a trade and all that. Okay, so you're so you're an east sider though from Cleveland. Oh yeah, as definitely. As far as your Cleveland roots, yeah. Hell yeah. You like the west side? Um, you love the west side. He said you love the west side. <laughs> you love the west side. <laughs> um, west side give great vibes off from shows I've done on the west side. Like mm-hmm. I've done shows like deep on the west side. I didn't did fucking house parties on the west side. Shout out to my like a Flomar. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't did like a lot of things, and it seemed like they're more. Their upbringing is a little better. My bad for saying that, but their upbringing is a little better. Kind of mm-hmm. handle their stuff a little better in in ways they're not as violent as it is over here. No, not at all. Um, but for the most part, though, I would say like I, I catch a I catch a pretty good wave and a pretty like pretty good like feedback from the west side. So yeah, I fuck with the west side. Like I would actually think I actually seen her saying that, but like honest <laughs> to God, like. I do fuck with the West Side though. Like shout out to all of the Mexicans and then the the mixed race over there. Like they, I love that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listen, West Side loves everybody. Hell yeah. You're right though. It's, it is more weird. violent. It is more violent. Yeah, East Side. You you can't sip that cup without asking where you get it from. <laughs> I know. I pulled up. I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> I'm ready for this shit. So when did music? I mean, I'm sure music is always part of your life. But when did it occur to you? Maybe as a child, you're like, man, I think I want to start recording shit. Or is this some new stuff? Because some people are like, oh, yeah, I've been wow. rapping for a year. You oh, know? Oh, wow. So does it go back? Or so, like, where, where does that start? So this shit goes like hella back. Like, mm-hmm. I remember when I was saying, like, like, because I did stay on the West Side. I used to stay off of, um, what the fuck is the name of that street? I can't remember. It was like uh, Carrington on mm-hmm. the West Side. Mm-hmm. Um, I used, It was like off of 130th. Okay. And, um, like, I'm saying, like, Deep West Side. Dude. And uh, my fucking uh, I can't I can't I'm trying to like think exactly mm-hmm. what happened like it just I don't even know like for the most part it was like some situations that happened and yeah we're not gonna discuss that well we'll, we'll skip just, that yeah part. we're gonna skip that part. we'll skip we're that, skip that part. part so well, so you started making music did you did you play like an instrument first because I know a lot of people um, 
that I know were like in a band first or something like that and then they kind of grew out of that and then they started to do vocal like rap or singing kind of music so I was wondering if maybe that's something you started off with or was it just like okay. boom rap well it was never just boom rap I might as well just fucking say it then okay well so basically I started off doing poetry I yeah. was never really a rapper I used to like sing in my room to myself I used to be really yeah. shy and very insecure mm. so I used to like write all my shit down and when I like stayed on the west side and shit like I used to like have my own little like things of like things I wanted to do mm -hmm. and rapping was never one of them like I never really thought about it like I used to have like little meetings with my friends they stay downstairs from us so I would go down there and meet with them and I would have kind of conversations with them like hey maybe we should try to like write some stuff and I would like write all of our parts like on some Beyonce shit mm -hmm. and a Destiny's Child but that kind of like didn't work out because one of them shout out to Kaylin Coffee. I know she knows who the fuck I'm talking about I hope she hop on my live of course nobody's on here right now but she fucking like i don't know like we i had her doing a part and she didn't know how to do it uh -huh. so that kind of like she couldn't rap the shit yeah and i kind of like no, she couldn't <laughs> sing the part and it kind of like took me back from it but then when i used to do it by myself it was like perfect mm -hmm. and then poetry mixed with that it was just like you know what maybe i can just do just poetry so yeah. then when i started going yeah. to school down here like i started doing poetry and i started going to Schuler on the west side i don't really mm -hmm. know you know what that said mm -hmm. but um Schuler is like right by 130th okay but i ended up um doing poetry when i was there like poetry slams and stuff they had there and then from there like i stopped completely and then yeah. i did like some stupid shit in 2015 i tried to attempt suicide yeah and of course i'm still here so yeah. yay but yeah. for the most part um that was some stupid shit that i had did and yeah and it seemed like when I woke up out of everything that I had ever been through, like, I'm a whole nother individual. Like, mm -hmm. my mother even says it, like, you act like a whole completely different individual. Like, you're way more open than you used to be, but you, like, way more stronger, too, in a way. And I don't know. Like, out of nowhere, I was just like, I want to write. Like, I want to be a fucking rapper. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the way that I became a rapper was crazy. Like, shout out my nigga Trizzy or whatever. Like, that's why I work for now. Like, that's my producer. And he found me on the humble. Yeah. Like I was coming down the street, and he kind of just <laughs> you were like, coming down the street. Yeah, like I was literally like I was. I met a dude like from the the store that's like over on Kinsman or whatever, mm -hmm. and he was like a crackhead or whatever. Like he was selling like chargers and shit. Yeah, and yeah. I fucking like I took this guy's advice, and he told me to meet him at his home. And come to find out, he was a registered sex offender. Like, it was terrible. And this producer just so happened, it was like, God, like, mm. do this. Like, you went through all of this trauma. This is another chance. This is what you can do. And now I'm a rapper, and now I'm Jay now. Like, mm -hmm. like I just be telling like, people, they act like they really know me for real. Like, I just started rapping, like, two years ago. So I don't really... I, I, I ain't gonna even say I really don't rap, but, like... I'm still getting a feel of shit, like, yeah. and I like the feedback that I'm getting back from it. That's what's making me still keep going and making me still want to keep being a rapper and making me still want to keep doing what I do, like, like just period. Like, I have to at this point because I feel like I have no other option. Like, right now I'm not working. Like, I get all of my revenue and everything back from this. Yeah. Like, so really um, gotta, yeah, really like this is, and then I got in. a kid. Like, shout out my baby. Like. I just, I don't know, I'm like so well connected with this. So this is something that not only I want, it's something that God want me to do. So, because I never, I never thought I'd be doing this right now. Well, I'm glad you made it out. Oh, yeah, definitely. Of whatever you were going through, you know. It's just, uh, just a part of life. Damn. So, you record with who? What, what was the person's name? Um, his name is Trizzy on the track. Trizzy on the track, yes. And that was part of, um... Blue Jay. It says his name on Blue Jay, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But he actually um, produced the other ones as well. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. didn't add him. Yeah. So, well, he's yeah, on that, that sucks. One. He's but on that one. Uh, that one had to be my mental. Like, mm, this is the guy that I record with. This yeah. is who the fuck it is. So, yeah, I set it up like that. Well, he sounds like a cool dude. He is. He's got a good, uh, good chemistry going on. Yeah, he's really wavy. Dreads, long. Um, he's younger younger than me um, by a couple of months. And okay. Yeah, like, he actually records, like, with a lot of artists in Cleveland, believe it or not, like... No, it's a small circle, He, man. Yeah, he, he's actually, you talking about the West Side, mm. that's why I'm trying to fuck the West Side even more, because that's where his studio is. 
Same. Yeah, shout out to Gully Music Recordings. Like they're fucking Gully incredible. Gully Music Recordings. Recordings. Yes, they are fucking incredible. They got some nice people in there. Like yeah, that really like take time and like sit with an artist and develop the artists that are making beats with them. Oh yeah, the sit with you and the bounce back ideas and yeah. shit. That's awesome. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. Make sure it's got you. Yeah. Okay. Well, dope. Yeah, you should move to the west side. That's great. A lot of Puerto Rican food and shit. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm gonna stick um, to your childhood a little bit. Sweet. <laughs> um, so, growing up, what kind of kid were you? Because this is where it starts. Like, your creativity starts as a child, just like you said with your kid. She's reading at an excellent level. She's got some of this, like, paint stuff around. Now she has an RC mother who probably has music on and RC stuff around. So that's going to, like, she's going to soak all that up, you know? Like, my mother listened to, in the 90s or whatever, mm-hmm. when I was a little kid, like, great, great music you know what i mean my whole family did so i think that like implanted something in me so she's gonna have that as well she's actually reads which i didn't do when you were a kid what kind of kid were you what kind of child were you were you bad was, were you kind of I was you bad said you were, i know you said you're quiet yeah i was quiet but i was bad as fuck though yeah yeah i'm an aries you stealing um yeah Are aries typically bad yeah i've done they're <laughs> typically crazy people yeah. call us crazy not they crazy. say every sign's crazy. Yeah, but us in Gemini, they just like over exaggerate. Like, oh, they have different personalities. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah I'm up. a Gemini. I hear yeah, it all it's time. like uh, get out of here. We're just we're just ordinary people. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, um, I would say my childhood. I was I was quiet, but very very bad. I I got in trouble at school a lot. Um, my mother for, for what? Um, just kind of. Trying to clown just, around just and not clowning. going. I won class clown. Did you? Um, twice actually in uh, my yearbook before, and <laughs> they shouldn't have kids voting for that because yeah, not like I saw them to work for. Yeah, but for the <laughs> most part, yeah, but for the most part, um, yeah, like <laughs> terrible, like terrible, like I was a my mom came to the school and would whoop me oh, in the bathroom. Fuck. Yeah, I was. That At least she kid. took you to the bathroom. So they Sometimes. You in front of- <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes, some most she of the was, time, no. I got just, whooped right there, or I got snatched up right there, or can I talk to y'all in the, the hallway fuck were you with the doing? teacher? Yeah. The fuck were you doing? Just interrupting? Interrupting the class, disruptive. Um, trying to make the attention on me. Yeah. T- typical <laughs> kid shit. Typical the baddest kid in the classroom shit. Well, AKA. At, least, at least you won awards. Yep. I wasn't that kind of bad kid. I was a sneaky shadow bad kid. You know, like. I just didn't want. I didn't want to go to school, so I figured out how to like sign in and get out, you know, and go do my thing oh, all day. You know? the truancy kid. Yeah, you're the kid. Yeah, yeah, you're the kid that covers me pretty much. Yeah, because yeah, you're being loud. I'm like, oh yeah, do your thing right. so I can go. <laughs> yeah, definitely the cover up. What was the first song you wrote? First song I wrote was called Fly Shit. Fly Shit. Is it still up? Yes, it's on SoundCloud. Oh. And when you put that out, were you nervous? I was nervous as fuck. I, I actually put it out the same day that I recorded it. Oh, you just psh, mixed like it the, the day that I met the day that I met Trizzy, and I didn't know this nigga. He was like, "Come to the studio." Like right after that shit happened, when he had technically, like I always say on all my interviews, like he kind of saved my life because that guy would have like either potentially snatched me up or. <laughs> Anything. It just happened the police is there, so either or I would have been saved because the police kind of was there too, and they were passing out the little registered oh, sex offender up. things. That's but up. he ended up, yeah, it is. It's God works in mysterious ways, apparently. But he, um, he took me to the studio that same day, and um, was like, "You got anything? Like you rap, you sing. Yeah. I heard you singing because that's what caught his attention. I was singing when I got out the car. Like I'm just la 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 la, just singing, getting out the car, about to get my ass snatched on some what the fuck, like." Not knowing that this is what's going on see, in Cleveland. That, see, this, yeah. uh, that definitely happens in Cleveland for sure. Yeah. First of all, snatching in, in the Midwest is terrible. But that's those dudes make it so bad for people like me or other men because just to get the interview or to work with a female, now they got it. They have to worry about these crazy ass niggas out here doing stuff like that. You know, like, oh, let me get close to you with some music and use someone's passion and then get close to them. So I. I again, I want to thank you for meeting me because I know that's a thing. I know dudes are in the DMs. I know they're creeping, 
and well, it's, no, the first it's, thing it's that, a shame and that's like one of your first experiences like you yeah. know like what kind of shit is that the first thing that my dude actually um like said it. was so does he know what he's gonna be axing you like he was just like so like like overprotective make like sure make good. sure you're straight like good. Yeah, so I I completely understand like, but at that time I did it and yeah that nigga I was so naive. He invited me to the studio right after that shit had happened. Like I was still talking to him walking down the street and my car is parked at the top of the fucking street, and he's like, yeah you know I got a studio right here you know pull around or whatever. I'm like, uh yeah skeptical, right. but this is my chance. God, what should I this do? This is my chance. I got a whole fucking song written in my phone. <laughs> But do I really want to tell him? And I fucking went and no cap. I did that shit. That nigga was like, bro, like you raw as fuck. Like, I don't know where you came from. I like this shit. We about to take off on this shit. And then nigga produced all four of my last albums. All four of my uh, mixtapes. My album actually dropped in August. August. Oh, you giving us dates? Ooh, yeah. I didn't even ask you the date. <laughs> so now, if it's August and it's not around, I'm gonna be all over Instagram. I'm like, I'm waiting. No, I, I drop. You better I drop, drop that shit yeah, right saying, now. I, I drop. I drop pretty well though. I drop on time when I say I'm gonna drop. I believe it. Yeah, I, I drop when I'm supposed to. So boom! Are right, you killing? You killing this shit? Do I know what my favorite songs are? What? My favorite songs are "Allo" and uh. 4.30, which says your birthday. Mm-mm. I don't know. Is that even a date? Is there 30 no, days? No, that's funny. Uh, like, I'm still standing. Oh, Nick. Still standing. Oh, Nick. Yeah, yeah, That's my yeah. shit. I was like, oh, all right. Because, you know, like, it, it, with rap, I always feel like a lot of songs are good, but there's just so much of it. So I'm like, this is cool. This is cool. But then I hear a song like that. And I'm like, oh shit! Like this really got me. Like yeah. yeah, like I had like it'll take me half the song, half the song will go on, and then like I'll, it'll hit me, and I'm like, oh wait, and I'm like, Whoosh, and I'll start it over, you know. So those those two songs are my favorites. Obviously, if I if I listen more, I'd have more to give you. But yeah, those are those are hot, especially at four thirty. That's just hot. You like four thirty? You love mimic? That's an awesome fucking song. I I I heard that one too. I, but those are the two that I had to pick. Um. Do you have? I know you just shot that video, yeah. Uh, in the sh- when you were um, strapped down in the Straight. crazy person suit, yeah. was that called? Uh, cushion. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So how did that come about? Uh, cushion came about. Cushion. This is out now. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It actually was on Blue Jay. So yeah, that was like one of those songs that was kind of like supposed to be a filler. What do you call Blue Jay? Is that an album or a playlist? I don't know Blue anymore. Jay, Blue Jay track list set Blue, of songs. Blue. Oh wow. What What do you call it now? Okay, so street album. Like like are you asking me like the like the meaning behind Blue Jay? Like what the hell is so that? So I want to know that. But what what is it? Is it an album? Is it a mixtape? Blue tape? Jay is a is a mixtape. Okay. Yeah. Because like some people drop mixtapes. It's like the ending of the fucking whole mixtape wave I had going on. Because I don't want to drop a mixtape anymore. I want to drop an album, and after the album, I'll give the nigga more mixtapes. I give him four more mixtapes after that. Mm-hmm. Oh, your nails, your nails look nice. Thanks. Yes. Jay. Okay. Mm, I'm getting to this now. So what is are you just gonna push this single right now? What cushion? Uh yeah, so August. Um uh, that's funny. So um, You don't gotta don't give me all the juice, but just give me some of it, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little a little peek into yeah, my Yeah, give little, me like a little notes. shot glass of the okay, juice. Okay, so I'm I'm pushing this right now until my next one drops in two weeks. Okay. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to say what video it is. I'm not going to say who's directing it. I'm not going to say the fucking thing behind the video. Can you just, give us a clue? He already did my other videos. Okay. I have oh, three damn. I have, I have three videos out right now, though. The guy that's doing my next video. And he, what, what, are the three, video. what are the three videos? Um, The first video I did was uh, Few. Few. Directed by Stay Chiefy. Stay Chiefy, shout out. He's actually a, a comedian as well in Cleveland. He's funny yeah, as fuck. Yeah, I yeah. I think I know who that yeah, is, actually. Funny yeah, funny as fuck. Yeah, shout out Stay Chiefy. Um, and um, I have another video called uh, 430. Mm. 430 was directed by Big Iller. Shout out to Big Iller Themes. He's got it going. Um, Bro, I didn't see that video. See. I'm sorry. Um, and my last video, Cushion, was directed by Logan Kingston. Shout out, Logan. Yeah, Logan Kingston. Yeah, I see his name. Well, dope. 
Damn, August. We start filming on Thursday, so so we better see how that go. Yeah, so make sure you check that out. Hopefully, you'll be all over the um, social medias. Let's see. Um, so with with albums, what do you think is the best way to to put it out as far as uh, the amount of songs? Um, do you launch a single maybe in two weeks for that first? And then drop the album, or like, what? What do you think is it gonna be a long album? Is it gonna be some Chris Brown shit with like eighty songs on that shit, or is it? Um, next album probably gonna be like eighteen track, and um, that's gonna be the longest like one I've ever done. That's why I'm yeah. trying to make it an album, not a mixtape. Yeah, eighteen songs. That's has to be your album. Yeah, only because I'm sitting on a lot of content right now as far as music, and that's my thing too. Like, I got fucking four mixtapes, two singles what three videos like on in between those mixtapes i got hella songs so i can mm. do as many videos and concepts and things that i think of along the way so now i'm just kicking back now for a whole year straight how i strategize was i made music for a whole year i sat back and watched my competition make videos and and put out songs and be like i want to make a video let me hit up my and I sat and watched that shit and I watched they crumble and then I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited and then eventually I was like you know what second year came around because I've only been doing this for two years like second year came around it was just like you know what I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna see what the fuck gonna happen Mm -hmm. and then this year I'm like fuck it I'm gonna just take off I'm gonna just start throwing out videos like just throwing out hella like content on top of content Content queen. Yeah, because that song, be. that's how I'm like, because you talking about you like Alo and and 430, like them two different like waves. Like that yeah. wave got two going into Kahuna, going into Blue Jay. Like mm-hmm. that's some whole, you ain't even tapped into the first one. That's why I'm like, I'm about to show niggas some shit that they probably haven't seen that has been in Cleveland or has ever taken place. And I'm ready to see, like I always say, what this year holds for me. So what does it hold for you i think it i think it holds positivity i think it holds some things that's going to impact my life that some people gonna be like how the hell did that happen or who the hell is this girl (laughs) or where the fuck did she come from or Mm -hmm. damn she remind me of you try to pop yeah i I ain't gonna lie i ain't even trying to like like pop anyone else's bubble you feel me but i kind of <laughs> i want i feel like i got that mindset i feel like once i have that mindset i i know i'm gonna go where i need to go because mm. i don't i haven't heard anyone else that sound like me no you 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 definitely stand out and you actually rap rap so that's nice you know um but can you explain to me uh your thoughts and feelings about um the female rap scene because i like to get i've been trying to get more female guests because i'm so uh, ingratiated or whatever the word is with all the dudes and i get sick of listening to dudes all the time so i was just like yeah suck my dick blah 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 you know and there's, there's good artists too you know but in the scene is it is it the competition the same? Because I, I feel like with male rappers, they get on someone else's song and they'll say something like, oh, I was trying to kill this person on that song. Right. And to me, that's kind of weird. I'm trying to make a great song. I'm not trying to get on someone else's song and like kill them. I understand the competitiveness and how you want to have the best verse, I guess, but I'm trying to make the best song. You know what I mean? I don't want to get in the game and hit four home runs and we lose. Right. You know what I mean? So what's the point? So as far as the the when the when the ladies get together and that scene, how do you feel about that? Is it supportive? Is it a lot of competition? Is a it lot of not enough? A lot of competition. A lot of it. Um, females are females. Females mm-hmm. feel. You seen Lion King? The the. The old Lion King? Yeah, just Lion King. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the, what's her name? Nyla, the other one that I guess is like with Simba. Was going to be the princess? Yeah, females are like her. Like every female is like a Nyla in a way. Like they want to be the next up. They want to be the queen. They want to be on top of the Mm -hmm. shit. Like they want to, if it comes down to making someone look like they're not as raw as you know they are. 
a female Don't will do, do that, that. <laughs> <laughs> real and quick for the most part like since i didn't been here and since i've been doing this whole little j thing and this whole little vibe and rapping females are not supportive like i haven't ran into one female that's actually supportive of my music that actually raps right now that's on mm -hmm. or has a they're name or has that. a following they they're not supportive and I'm very supportive. Like yeah. I'm very supportive to the point where like I voice it when I'm supportive. Like and I'll you'll know when I'm being supportive. But a lot of people in Cleveland it just seem like female and guy wise, like they don't really support female because I guess I'm a female. So it's like, Oh, she just talking about bang bang and uh, it's like mm -hmm. what you just said, like going on there and telling a nigga to eat out. Like anything. Like you see what I'm saying? Like a a dude won't won't think that you that raw but if you out here and you showing your body off and you have dressed or something like that mm. then a man respects you a little bit more so it's kind of hard to like grasp a man attention and grasp the female energy as well when yeah. you're trying to be a female rapper itself i feel like a female rapper got it a little bit harder than a guy actually does to be honest because I, I they, definitely i definitely see that yeah they don't look at us as rappers they look at us as, as sex symbols right now even though people don't realize that on the radio on every radio station there's a female that's on the radio there's not one guy that has a hit single right now that's on the radio that well i believe that needs to be on the radio shout out to tyler <laughs> creator but um yeah they won't put that, the show that, of radio. course they won't put tyler creator on the radio but they could shout though. out to they her really of course could. shout out the whole igor but I, I don't know like I just like people like that like I feel like he don't look at people like how others would like in a way of it's just a word for it but it's like on the tip of my mm. tongue like well I mean it, with with that kind of music that he makes that's kind of like I don't know what genre it is I guess it's hip hop and rap but it's so different Um, to take a break real quick on that did you see that? So his album went number one. Mm. Did you see how DJ Khaled was pissed? Yeah, I see. And how he's trying to like they. And this could just be poison press and fake news or whatever. Mm. But they say he's trying to sue Billboard because Tyler the Creator had you got merch or something. You got something with his album, like some kind of I don't know what it was a T-shirt or whatever. And so people are doing that now. And so they think that that is swaying album sales. So if I if Jay drops an album, well, album one, and then Jay has album two. And album one comes with fucking hair care products, right? To keep the shit tight. People are probably going to buy that more. But should that not go against? Should that not be a billboard thing? You know, that's his problem. He thinks that if you, ha if you give some merch with an album, it shouldn't count as a buy or an album stream. Is that fair? I feel like that is fair that he's giving something off people always gave something with something if it was a, a autograph in the mm. inside a yeah extra something like insert. that beyonce did it before i mean why can't tyler creator do it they say you beyonce can do it but they say it doesn't it shouldn't count Jackson as like a whole a whole unit sold or some crazy shit that's like that that's just stupid though for that i just, it just sound like to me like dj kelly just mad because he's not we the best he's not <laughs> making the best we sales. the second best yeah y'all the second <laughs> best to him like he did a really good job and as many people that were on that album like because i really like love music i don't really know about other people but i really look into an album before i say i actually like it mm -hmm. like it's really been a few albums that i actually can say that like, i really like can really like say I appreciate it from in top a way. to bottom. Yeah, like yeah. to the point where I'm like, damn, like I listen to this all the way through. Like Solange whole album, amazing. Her last yeah. album, amazing. Um, Igor was amazing. Like there's a lot of things that I don't know that people don't really like listen to all the way through, and oh, it'd be like hell? so worth it. What the hell? Come on, man. He knows he could have checked his phone and seen I was on that. Ugh. So, do you think there's a thing? Uh, do you think being over competitive is a thing and can be toxic? Because if you think about it, from what you just said, just how you explained DJ Khaled just kind of being a baby, and from the lack of female support and male support, do you think that could stem from 
and over like being a poor winner you know as a sore loser there could be a sore winner too you think it might come from that it might be just i think he's a sore loser yeah like in a way Mm -hmm. like why not let somebody take a little bit of shine that's like kanye coming up to taylor and just she had the best i'm like just give it to him like this is a guy like (laughs) yeah that was pretty wild bro like you're an older guy this guy is way younger than you he produced his whole album he did exactly what you would what you would do which is Mm. go out and get charlie wilson and solange and lil uzi vert and Mm -hmm. and people like this to be on his album and he produced it himself like i just feel like in a way it just is obvious like it sounds like you're being a sore loser because when anybody was up under you did anybody else say i'm about to just sue the billboards because yeah. and then no one's saying like hey like your album is like a producer album it's not even yeah it's you at the end of it but it's like what probably like 40 fucking artists on that shit you know that's what i'm saying like that's not that's a sore loser yeah yeah that's what it sounds like no i agree that's what it sounds like (laughs) i try to hit the news a little bit yeah Mm, it sounds like a little bit why you're so rich like Mm -mm. you've been keeping shit on the radio since i was a little ass kid so like what's the problem he still got stuff on the fucking radio yeah and and tyler's not gonna drop an album (laughs) forever yeah who knows but the radio's just kind of dead man like radio radio Mm -hmm. Uh, it's cool if you can get something on there, but, yeah, but I mean, it doesn't make you anymore. They're not, they're not really playing the type of music that I want to listen to at this point. Wait, so we have I have Kahuna and I have Blue Jay. What's another project you okay, said? So Other it's than a, what's coming up? Okay, so it's all of them. It's um, it's Wave Got, Wave Got Two, Wave Got, Wave Got Two, Kahuna, Kahuna, Blue Jay, Blue Jay. So I came on the second half. Yeah. So I came around. This is has to only be second year stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it, it, was there any struggles with your first year as far as, like, writing or... I mean, you said you found your producer. So, like, was there any struggles? Um, um, the first uh, mixtape, Wave Got 1, was easy to do. Mm-hmm. Wave Got 2, I got really lazy. It was only, like, <laughs> what, like, 10 songs on that one? Like, I got really lazy. It was just, like, I got brain fart. And I just started coming to the studio just to smoke and catch the vibe of a beat. Like, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> All right, well, I'm about to leave. I'm hungry. <laughs> like, you next? You're like, nah, right, you said, no, not, I said, I thought you was just today. writing. No, I'm going to hit you up tomorrow. I got a headache. Just <laughs> lying, like. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't taking it serious until, like, really, like, you know what? Okay, the second year coming around, like, they'll try coming around. We got to, like, push out some waves. Like, you need to hop on your shit because you're falling off. And I don't want to make one hit wonders and be sitting like being a little sitting duck because I feel like for a minute when I was doing shows at the Anatomy nightclub before they shut down here, it was like... Oh, yeah, there is no more Anatomy. Yeah, like I found them out on the radio station and I went down there and I won first twice. And it was just like, oh, shit, like this shit is pretty cool. Well, congrats. Hell, yeah, like that shit was pretty cool. Like, but I don't know. Like I would... I don't know. Do you have, any, have, to, do you have any shows coming up? Um, fire shows coming up. I mean, you can book shit like a week in advance, so it's yeah. whatever. But um, well, I'm I have an event that I'm attending. Um, oh yeah, that that counts. Um, I actually have um an event that I'm actually um judging as well for a kids uh fashion and talent show. Oh really? Yeah, with uh, Trap Boy cool. Mannequin and DJ Freddie Mac. So um, me and a lot of other local like um little celebrities as i call us um uh-huh. it's a lot of little rappers or whatever that's coming out um i won't call us little but it's a lot of rappers that's coming out um or whatever that's um gonna be judging some kids mm-hmm. so it's gonna be like 17 and uh and it's like 17 at? and down where they're having auditions on the 14th down off of fleet at the playground so that's they're gonna have dope. that and then they have dope. another one out in hudson and yeah, I'm looking for like hella good talent. Like I'm ready to like I ain't never been a Simon Cowell in a way, so this should be fun. <laughs> this should be fun. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to see some kids hit them folks and hit the whoa and the nay nay. Cause I yeah, feel like somebody gonna, gonna come and dance. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. That's cool. I, I like the communities doing stuff like that. Yeah. I like the fact that I get to be a part of it and I got asked, like, on a humble, like, mm-hmm. hey, you want to, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. that so feels nice, there. right? But that's not the first thing I've actually done that, like, gave back. Like, I did a, um, a food drive at Kings and Queens. Okay. Yeah, and they had to bring, like, canned goods and stuff up there. So, yeah, they man. gave back, yeah. Hell yeah. 
And it was okay. again, it was for a the lot community. Of Jay is yeah. for the community. Definitely. Already. Definitely. I like people. Some. <laughs> you know, a lot Some. of a lot of artists and rappers get a bad rap. They don't ever show all the things they do. Their rappers are always buying book bags, and they're always doing chef, doing food drives and stuff like that. But people don't ever see that. We just see the monkey shit, you know. The fucking crazy, this nigga shooting this nigga, and blah, blah, blah. That's great you're doing that. Damn. It's fancy, right? Fancy. Um, What kind of water is this? Like carbonated mineral water? So it's it's like just a soda sparkling. water. It's just soda water. It's just, it's just soda water. Yeah, it's just soda water. Shout out to the soda waters. Yeah, that's how you know you're getting old when you start drinking soda water. Listen, that's how I, you know. I was listen. I think maybe that's the same thing because like they have like the little tall like core waters and they have like the one that has yeah, like the yeah, light yeah. blue one. Yeah, yeah. I'm so stupid. I went in Walgreens and grabbed one. It was like that color blue, and I went in there mm-hmm. and I opened it and I was like, okay, cool. Got in the car. It was nice and cold. I was like, ew. <laughs> They say it's like medicine. What is they this? Put that, they put they pump some shit in there. Yeah, see, like it was like probably like Try to take over your seltzer. mind, Jay. Try to take over your mind. Yeah, so I was like, maybe I got the wrong one. <laughs> maybe somebody put a sprite in here on accident with the water and it's fizzing on purpose. But yeah, I felt really stupid. Mom was like, it's a sparkling water. It's like, oh, okay, then. Well, I don't want this. <laughs> Hell no. You gotta get that. You gotta put some like limes and shit in there. Yeah, the sexy the stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, you know you. Yeah, you're cucumber, old. Cucumber, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I am, but I just turned thirty, bro. I'm <laughs> old, B. I'm out the game. I'm out the game. And I gotta be the interview guy. Hmm. Okay. So, with what you've dealt with uh, within the music industry so far, has it been mostly positive or negative? Or somewhere in between. Mm. And that when I ask that, I mean like, so you're rapping, so you're posting stuff, you're dealing with DJs, you're dealing with producers, you're dealing with friends that might have a take. Now you're dealing with other rappers and artists and you're going to these events. Has it been like, what is, what have you gotten from it? Like, how do you feel about it right now? Um, Positive impact. Mm. I would say on that end. Um, I got a lot of fans over the course of the two years that I've been doing this, and I like the feedback. And I like the fact that people fuck with what I'm trying to do, mm-hmm. not what other people are trying to do with the hibbity chibbities. Um but Oh, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> hibbity bibbities, the, uh, the Beretta flow, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of it, but... You want some more of this? Yeah, sure. I'm a fan of it, but mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Right, it gets it gets a little ridiculous. Yeah, like, and it's not what they're saying. I fucking love that part. I love what they're saying. I fucking love it, and I want everybody to realize that too on this little interview. I fucking love the hibbity chibbity. I'm just tired of the it. The hibbity chibbity. Yeah, the if it's if it's hibbity chibbity hibbity hibbity in my bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. All it's, that. It's cool, but then at a certain time, it's like, what the fuck, like. So would you consider yourself more of a purist? Like someone being different? A purist. Fine. Purist, uh, when I'm talking about rap, is like more hip-hop, like Rhapsody or Nas or... They're like slightly different. Even, I would, Tyler's closer to a purist, honestly, the way he raps, you know? So would I consider myself a purist? Yeah. Because you that. you have a yeah I mean because um, you've used a couple different flows yeah it's not the same flow on every song mm-hmm. but I I, cause I try to be versatile like yeah. I don't like making the same song I'm glad you caught on to that so everything yeah. means you really like listen to me yeah, yeah. I appreciate that yeah listen shout to everyone, out you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't come on here bullshitting bro shout out you yeah but um I guess yeah yeah I would say I'm a purist I would yeah. say I would say you're closer to that yeah yeah yeah. Trying, trying to trying to be different in my own little way mm-hmm. yeah but not so different that you're like alienating yourself yeah you know like let me unfollow every fucking body and only yeah. follow one person yeah it's just me like, it's just fuck? me against the world let me just only stuff follow like my that. boyfriend like yeah. no. No, no, no no that's weird no that is weird <laughs> so okay uh so what is it like being in a relationship uh and rapping 
So like weird because it's like you're talking <laughs> shit. It's like weird because you're talking shit. You're talking about like yeah, like you know, fucking niggas. Got this nigga <laughs> eating me out and I kicked him out of my house and like shit like that. And then like your boyfriend's sitting okay, there like so, yeah. I mean this is hard though. But like okay, kind of so, like I don't know. Okay, you so funny me story. Like the dude that I talked to, his name is Devonair. Yeah. Um, oh. He um. Shout Dev. Yeah, shout Dev. Um, as you can see, I'm glowing. He um. <laughs> I met him through rapping. He's a rapper too. Oh, awesome! That's and perfect. He understands everything. We actually have a song together. It's called "Hold Up." That was one of my singles. Oh, that's him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. My, yeah. That's my little. Aww. Yeah. All right. That's dope. Yeah. So he's he's understanding, but we do fall out. So I'm not gonna make it seem like other people making it seem like it's like all peaches and cream, 112, everything cool. It's not. Um, well, it's never events always. Events where I have my daughter, of course, because she goes over her father's house. That's not her biological father. Mm -hmm. um, she'll go over to um, her father's house sometimes, but sometimes she'll be with me because she stays here with me. And he has shows that week, and I don't have a babysitter. Yeah. So now it's like, what the hell? Like, what are we going to do? I can't go, but when you come home, it's like, babe, this is what happened. Let me show you my video. No, 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 He doesn't even know this. It's like, damn, I kind of wish I was just fucking there. Like, yeah. And then that'll steer up, like, some bullshit. Like, I'll either probably catch an attitude. Like, mm -hmm. I'm kind of salty. Like, I couldn't really, like, be there to, you know, support because I've been at every other, like, event. And I've then sat back in the crowd and watched my man do his one, two, and then heard people, like, be like, fuck this nigga talking about. Or, like, you know, like, not really fuck with it, but it's like, I fuck with it, but I feel like if I was there, they could have seen my little cute ass fucking with the shit, and these little corny ass niggas would have fucked with it, too. Just being real with you, like... No, I understand what you're saying. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm just talking, but, nah, like, nah. I'm just glad, real, like... No, I'm glad you said that, because a lot of people that I've had on my show, they're, they're, they're pushing the positivity with... They just, they're pushing it, and I respect them, because that's definitely what we need here. But what you're saying, I think, is a little more realistic to the tone <clears throat> it's at right now. And mm -hmm. it's still, there's still a lot of hate and there's still a lot of negative shit. Um, but people like you and people like my former guests are all pushing something that will happen. But it's good that you see that. Because, yeah, I, I go to these shows and these events and these showcases and people aren't even moving. Like, I don't have to fucking love the song. You know what I mean? Like half the songs Bob that are your super fucking popular. Head. Clap yeah, I'm gonna at the move. End. Yeah, yeah. The clap, the clapping kills me. Like I fucks with y'all. Yeah, you like walk off and nobody's clapping. I can't give you. I can't give you this. You know what I mean? Like I, I'll go to even if I go somewhere to eat and they have live music. Every time the person's done talking, I clap. Give them fucking twelve claps. They're here for a fucking you know reasons I mean? so yeah. that they enjoy doing. Like Just I was give recently, them clap, like man. I don't want to say any names, but I went to an event recently at Iggy's Traven, and I ended up yeah, going yeah. like twelfth. They had like a thing where you had to sign up, and I went twelfth. It was a pre shaming panel. The event was free. People came out. Everybody got like what one they, song or three songs. Everybody had a seven minute set. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is my thing with Cleveland promoters. Now I understand that it's a free event, and it's not even the promoters. Let me just take that back. Promoters are awesome. It's the artists. They're not supportive of other artists. Everyone turned up within like the fourth person going. The sixth person got called to the stage. Mm, about like twenty people. Eighth person came. Ten people was in the crowd by the time i went on it was literally the owner the fucking bartender the vendor that was still there and this guy that thought i was fucking cute that stayed there with his friend and that was his fucking ride <laughs> hell no and then some old ass nigga that had went on before me but it was just like where the fuck was the big ass crowd just a minute ago when the fat dude was up here shout out mm -hmm. simmy because he know who the fuck i'm talking about yeah like i'm not gonna say who the fuck hosted the event but it was just like some of the artists like i really feel like you want. they could have literally like stayed there no because i'm not a shade thrower like i'm really not like that it's not shade. but i really felt like some of the artists could have like stayed in and grab something way bigger like none of the some of the artists there were so wrapped up and so indulged in let's go smoke a out outside and bro we better go fuck with these bitches to the point where mm -hmm. nigga you had twanzo there you had deuce on air which is with 107.9 you had size sevens that host the legend awards in cleveland ohio all these important people you had you had tyra 
she's a a or she's a pr and a and r i believe i'm not really sure because i was a little high that night but she <laughs> she's up i got all these people info that's how yeah, i know yeah, who yeah. they are and, they're and working. I, they're when they were working. done talking on the panel i went up on the stage hi i'm jay with my little psychedelic glasses on this is me this is who mm-hmm. i am this is where my music is I've come to find out the nigga deuce on there shout out deuce from 107.9 he's fucking following me like mm-hmm. these are things that a lot of artists could have grasped when they were there but artists do their song yeah they fucking with me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They broke with your shit. you network a little bit and then you out but you miss the real purpose of why the fuck we're here the name of the showcase is called appreciation panel these are motherfuckers that we should appreciate they are here in the city big hef He's yep, with the girl that was there was under Big Hef. These are people that's under all these radio stations that you talk about and you dream about. Why not network? Why not? I just, I just, I don't, I don't get it. Like a lot of artists in Cleveland, they don't grasp no, the networking yeah, and the I support. I I don't get it either. About really like being an artist. Mm-hmm. Like, and I feel like sometimes I take it too serious because I really love music and I really want to be an artist. I really want to sit and talk to Sway and kick a freestyle with this nigga. And yeah, yeah. You feel you what I'm five, saying? You want to do like, the five minutes or five fingers? You feel me? I want to do the whole five fingers with this nigga. Like, I want to do it all <laughs> with this nigga. But a lot of people don't dream that big. Probably because, like, what I do, like, I'm a Buddhist. So I chat Namyo Harenge Kyo. Mm-hmm. And I'm so driven. Like, you can, you can see it through my aura. Like, I just, I'm so driven in what I want. And once you manifest what you want, that's what you get in life, I believe. Yeah. So... That's just how I am. Well, I mean, I agree with that. I, that's what I see a lot, too. But I, I think it's changing. Um, and as long as you keep doing what you're doing, I'm sure you'll be fine, right? Definitely. You know? Yeah. I, I oh, Man, I'm glad you said that. You want some of the lime juice? I'm trying to see what it smells like. <laughs> it's straight lime juice. It smells like limes. What do you think it smells like? It doesn't have like a little hint of sugar in it. <laughs> nah, 100% lime. Ooh, it was a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I wanted to be like a... <laughs> it's just gonna be like a fucking sour patch. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's real shit. I uh I've noticed that too. I I don't know. Do you have any beef? Please tell me you got some beef. I've been waiting for I've been waiting for some rapper beef. I got a little bit of for beef. months. Oh let me have it, please. Give me some of the beef. And that's funny that I actually have I beef. need, I need it. You must know what the fuck is going on on Instagram or something. I might. I okay, might watch. So the beef that I have is that the video that I dropped mm-hmm. is called Cushion. Yes. Um, A guy, I'm not giving him none of my fucking time, period. He knows can't what the fuck give, I'm talking about. Can't give him a name. No names, no names. You're a, you're a bitch ass nigga. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. But he took my idea. He took my whole concept and mm-hmm. made a whole video about it. So the whole to the red chair, to now, the wait, straight wait, wait, jacket. wait, wait. So how do you know, or how do you? F- how do I know? How do you figure? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the guy that produced it, shout out to Logan again. Mm-hmm. He sent it to me early as fuck at like eight o'clock in the morning, and sure enough, the guy ordered his same straight jacket off of Amazon. Got the same one that I got. Only thing the nigga was missing was my name, the name cushion on the video, and my big ass hair up under this weave mm-hmm. I got. That's it. That's all he was missing. Like he literally, when this video, when this little interview is over, I'll show you that. He took my listen, whole. He listen, took my whole I video. Seen it. He took my whole video. He took my whole video. And wait, so okay, wait. When did yours drop? Mine dropped actually. I've dropped my video now. It's just now about to be like three weeks now later. Yeah, I'm going it's YouTube still pretty and quote fresh. It. He dropped his shit literally like what a week ago. Now. Like, it's, it's just now oh. dying out to the point where, like, it's so local. <laughs> and, he's, post, and he's local. He's, he's from Cleveland. Oh. Um, fuck it. Um, I couldn't, his I couldn't name is shoot. Kush. I don't even give a Kush, fuck Yeah, now. no, it's, it's, it's name, a show. It's not a yeah. deal. His it's name just is, music. Yeah, his name is Kush. Um, <laughs> He's with Major League Party. And Second Chance recorded his video. Hmm. And I fuck with Second Chance. Wait, like, what if you think it, it could be just a coincidence? <laughs> no, um, Second Chance actually, um, we spoke um, through DM and through um, like Messenger and stuff. He told me that he was inspired by my video um, oh, and by what right, we did or whatever. Right. But the way that his artists, as him, like even how I approach it, and I'm gonna say this, I'm just gonna say it one time, and this is still my second time, but I'm gonna say it one time on here. Yeah, one time on that here. I just feel like as an artist. When a person comes to you with an idea, I feel like Nikki right now on her show. When you come to an artist 
with an idea as a director. It is up to the artist to fucking decline or accept the offer. Yeah. If I came to a person that was a director and said, I want you to be in a fucking straight jacket, all white room, red chair. I want you, I like you're fucking trying to get out of it. Mm. We're going to spray paint the fucking chair red. Don't worry about that. I got you. It came overnight. I got a fucking idea. As an artist, you should have did your fucking research. You should have did your fucking research. Because mm-hmm. not only did a local artist in Cleveland just drop the just same did, fucking yeah. concept, but this nigga did not come up with that idea. That storyboard was written, written out in my notes for a month in advance. <laughs> I gave that deposit money for my director a week yeah. in advance. You took my whole fucking idea and made a fucking video. No, that is considered some clout chasing shit. And that is considered Mm-mm-mm. very corny. That is considered the most weirdest shit I have ever experienced. That is the first time I've actually had slight some beef weird stuff. with anyone. Because everybody Listen, know I'm cool as fuck. I've goofy. never had beef with anyone. I that's never. your first that's your first take. That's my first that's I'm my first you, take in some rap beef. Goofy. That's that's my first take. Don't get me wrong. I get some little some little haters like, oh, you need to stop being like this. Yeah, like, life. but that ain't shit to me. I don't mm. give a fuck about that. That's some little we arguing through some DMs. I don't give a fuck. Whatever. But you for the most you part, in the DMs? yeah, like you argue in the DMs. You can put them off with somebody calling. Oh, okay. If it's like a rapper or whatever, okay. I gotta I gotta get the new. I'm gonna get the new box where I can um connect the fucking Bluetooth and have people call in and shit. But yeah, you can put people on the shit. Okay. You know, well, no, you, that's a bill collector. Oh no, no, don't put them on. You the can put them on. Sally. Uh-uh. You can put them on. I'll troll them for you. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> like I ain't got it. <laughs> Quit calling. <laughs> well, you know what I do when bill collectors call my phone? I'd be like, he's in the back, and then I hang up. Yeah, I'd be like, wrong, scare I'd be like, like wrong what the number. Fuck? <laughs> because I used to work for um National Enterprise Systems called mm-hmm. NES out in Solon, mm-hmm. and they fucking. Like, by me being one of those people that people hang up on every day and having to meet, like, a quota and a bonus every fucking month, it kind of was just like, hmm, I kind of see how it feels now to get hung up on and be called, like, a bitch and being a, you yeah, black bitch ain't shit, being hung yeah, up yeah, on. That shit, yeah, that's, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. I gotta take a pause. You're about to blow up and then you're about to help me. He says you're about to fucking help me. Because people, you're super fans, right? Your super fans will go back. The and Blue Jays. Like, the fucking That's what blue, the fuck it is. The fucking Blue Jays will go back and they'll be like, damn, I want that, like, I want that OJ. Because they're always going to say that no matter what. What, the OJ? They want the OJ, you know? Oh, I want the OJ. Yeah, because I, I ain't going to lie. I'm a, I'm a super Drake fan and I, I miss the old Drake. I ain't going to lie. Like, I cried. But the when old he Drake is. The old Drake. Wait, we got to. Hold on. Do we got to finish you before. That's the end of the part. That's the end of the interview. Okay. We start talking about other people. That's hold on. <laughs> so we got the beef. Are you about to the, the fucking diss this nigga? You want to be like, yo, get, get on the fucking. Uh, some like my beat beat and just like go in or you about to just be like all right Far as just what? let it slide oh oh we'll do copy in your shit oh, yeah am yeah, i we'll gonna do, do some shit. like some because i'm some see, you're here so i'm on your side some... right now <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh no um are you just gonna be like all right no i actually i did my whole little rant i did my bitch fit and yeah, I, see your rant. I let it i let it slide nigga go out there do what you gotta do I hope you get more views than me. Did, I hope I get more views than you. Because he said it, you inspired. That's the cop out. So and you say and that, it's over Once with, you like, say you inspire, I don't give a fuck. But this is like my thing, though. Nothing. He never even said that. The guy that directed it actually said that he was inspired. But the artist, I still feel like he was just being like a whole ass nigga. I feel uh, like he was, in a way. Like, in a way, you could have literally, like, gave me my props. Like, bro, you said yes. You was a yes man, in a way. Yeah. You can't you can't be a yes man and expect that I'm to be sorry. a good thing. But Yo, Doja Cat's been all over my Instagram. I fucking love her. She's every time I put my shit on, she fucking pops up. Yeah, yeah, she's dope. I fucking love Doja Cat. Doja Cat is a really fucking good artist. Like, I listened to Doja Cat before she was even popping with Tia Tamara with Rico Nasty. I listened to Rico oh, yeah, Nasty yeah. before, before fucking Tigo, Tia Tamara. Yeah, Like, Rico Mood. Nasty that's, is, that like, song's... a fucking amazing artist. Like That song that song isn't even that great for those no, two no, artists. No, it's that. good. It's good. No, no, it's Tia good. It, no, it's good. But, like, it's like, like for, for people, because, yeah. you know, a lot of people seen that who don't pay attention to them. So, I feel like for that, like, people don't even know those artists if that's the only song they've seen. Because that's it popped a little bit. Yeah, because they, they're awesome. 
So damn. Um. So before we before we start talking about other artists, uh, well, I guess this will bleed into it a little bit. Like, who who are some people? Um, and this is a great opportunity to name drop, uh, locally, globally, that uh, you listen to as a kid. We'll start off when you're a young kid that, mm-hmm. that, that you really liked. And then try to go a little bit into... How old are you now? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm you know, 26. The, 26. Okay. So, you know, you have the kid and then you have like the teen to young adult, which you're still a young adult. We're still young adults. But uh, up until this point. So as a, as a child, who are you listening to and who are you listening to now, locally and globally? Um... You don't have to do any local if you don't want globally, to. Globally, no, I listen to local rappers. Of course, the fuck I do. Um, globally, well, I don't even say globally. Let's just say industry. Um, industry built. I listen to Trippy Red. Yeah. Um, I like. I fucking love Trippy Red. Big fan. Um, I'm definitely a Josiah fan. Shout out X. Trippy, um, yeah. Shout out X. Rest in peace. Trippy Red sounds like. Love. Him. Sounds like you. Love he him. like. Love he him. like sang in the shower and then put some tune on it. Love though. it. I love everything. I love everything about it. I'm a I'm a Luz, Uzi uh, fan too as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Pharrell. Oh yeah, Pharrell's the um, goat. Andre 3000, Three Sacks. Um, my fucking God, please take me under your wing, please. <laughs> that man is incredible. He he's is very, like he's very he's uninspired like, he, right now. In a way, I swear to God, I will go on Doctor Phil on lie and say that that man is my father just so he can meet me and tell me that he is <laughs> not my dad. I don't give a fuck. Any tactic to meet Andre 3000 is my that'd goal. That'd be an epic episode. Um, Missy Elliott. Um, oh, industry yeah. built. Goat. Um, I fucking uh, obsessed with her. Everything she does, eat, breathe, sleep. Missy Elliott. Love is Missy the goat? The, Man, the female goat? She's Let's a take fucking... The dude, take she's, the dudes out of here. She's not the female goat Um, in the era that I would say. I would say rap base, based. Um, I would say MC Light. Um, I fucking That's love fair. her. I would say that she's um the goat. I hate the fact hmm. that hmm. a thousand people will probably hear this later on down the line, but... I would definitely say MC Light is somebody yeah. that I would probably I don't think cry anybody if I would ever seen. Hate on that response. Like at all. she's fucking amazing. Like if people really listen to real rap though, like F- as MC Light's artist, rough neck, right? She's on a rough neck. Yeah, like yeah. she's like Queen Latifah, like yeah. deeper than Queen Latifah, but mixed with with some Foxy and some some Kim. I think all these people came after MC Light. Yeah. So yeah, MC Light's definitely like old head. Like, yeah. One, one step into where it actually got like derogatory and yeah, started definitely. cussing and shit. Yes. What about uh, Rhapsody? Um, in the basement? No. <laughs> I was like, oh, Everybody that? does that. I'm no, like, no, I missed that show. No, <laughs> Rhapsody, the rapper, the female rapper. Ooh. Oh uh, no, I don't. Give me hit. Oh. I feel like a fucking lame. Yo, you about the you about the. Somebody got me hit to something you called the, 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 the something girls just like recently and I was getting my hair done. City about, girls? No, the... not, no, fuck no. What? Are you City serious? girls is dope, man. They're dope, what, One of them but... chicks is in jail because they're fucking she's crazy. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. <laughs> she didn't, she's not crazy. She's in jail for fucking <laughs> She's fraud. scamming, yeah. She's hey, man, scamming. scamming. She's fucking hey, on her rich ass scamming ass nigga. Shout out to the scammers. <laughs> shout out to the scammers, man. People got to scam sometimes. I respect City girls because they say what they actually fucking do. They do fuck on rich ass scamming ass niggas crazy bro sorry keep going i'm gonna put you on a rap <laughs> i'm gonna put you on a rap city though Rat, i need to know who that is though before you leave no oh fuck she in my opinion she is the goat rapper she's 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 jill scott if are you she serious? only rap you know when good shot raps I like she would jill scott. like she would rap sometimes but she would mostly sing but when she raps that's what rhapsody is all but all rap Definitely. It's, but back to you, you were saying though about the about the different uh, rappers and shit. Please. So industry, like there's like a long list of those. Like I'm I'm basically nineties era fucking eighties stuck. I don't even know how to fuck to get out of it. I've been scared since I woke up from my little coma from my little incident that we spoke about earlier. Mm. So I'm like stuck in an era where I never dressed like this. I've never really been into certain shit, but I feel like my real me is showing. And I fucking love it. But as far as yeah. music, I'm stuck yeah. in 90s. Like, I'm stuck in that whole wave of... I go to... Can I just say this? I went to the thrift store and... Thrift then. I changed tags at the thrift store. So maybe I'm fucking on a rich ass, scamming ass nigga too. <laughs> but I changed tags in thrift store so I can get the merch out of there. Yeah, yeah. And I fucking love thrifting. But anywho, did not like change yeah. the subject. No, it's a cool thing. But yeah, like it only works for girls though. Thrifting for guys is not the move. Get the fuck out of here. 
Death of Guys is not. Ever the heard of one. Avalon on Coventry? Yes, I've heard of Avalon. I got a uh, the throwback Kobe jersey out of there for twenty four dollars. Okay, I've gotten a couple pieces. Number eight throwback twenty four. Listen, do you catch the wave? <laughs> I hear what you're saying. Listen, I hear what you're saying, but amazing. that is rare. That is rare as that fuck. Is rare. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That is rare. That's crazy. That was in there. Someone must have been hurting for money to give that up. But I've got a couple jackets and shit out of there. But I can't go in there and just cop outfits like Why? girls can go in there because they don't have as much stuff. I don't cop outfits though. I, I got a thousand fucking shirts and no pants. Listen, I'll go in there <laughs> with my exes and shit and they're shopping and I'll shop for a minute. I'll be like, all right, I don't see nothing. And I'll be looking up like, oh shit, this looks great. Like, this is great on you. This is great on you. Like, they got they got the options. All I'm saying is thrifting for gentlemen is not an easy task. You just got to go to like just the jersey section that you're they right, have you're or right. go in there during the winter time and just go in the big sweater section. I went to one thrift store in Pittsburgh and it was like Avalon or whatever mm. and they had hard shit I don't know what was going on at that store was it in LA oh yeah I bet oh yeah they have a fucking or show actually or something. It's, um, it's on Netflix I'll take all that season it's, 5 um, shit it's with the fat guy he actually like sells like resells like yeah. different types of like fucking clothes he, like he had a fucking he makes like fake Gucci and shit and like resells. I was talking about like white dude. Called, or he might uh, be like half, sloppies. He does the shit with the uh, it's sloppies. That's the name what's of the it. Cha- what's the channel he does it on? They do like a whole bunch of like weed baking stuff too. I know he's talking about. He'll make channel? he'll make the like. Uh, no, it's on TLC. YouTube. Oh, no, it's on YouTube. It's uh. But he makes like fake Supreme and like he'll make yeah. the Gucci saying like Man, tape and yes, shit. Man, yes, that should be looking so hard. It does. It looks real. I'm like, wow, that shit looks real. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Wait, was Thrift Shop a good song then? The Mecklemore? Nah, hell yeah. Right, Are you good. serious? Good everything that he fucking said I'm was just saying. like... I'm just making sure. <laughs> yes. Like, everything that he said was just like right on cue. Like, it I was. got hella furs upstairs that's from Poppin' Tags. There you go. Yes. And I think that he said Poppin' Tags was like switching them. So maybe what I'm doing is not a bad thing. Not at all. Because I'm definitely in there switching off the green tag. And they say the blue tags are on sale. Yep, I'm putting the $4 hey, on there. Hey, man. Get it half you got to do what she got to do to look right. Yes. Especially for the shows or whatever. Especially the oh, shows. Oh, wait. Okay, so who else? Who else? Locally, I would say, um, as far as a rapper, I would say I listen to Brit Bands. I like her music. Um, she's a, oh, she, I'm, she's, a, I'm a hip. She's a female artist. I like her music. I like her song, Envy Me. Um, I like Brick that song. Brit Bands? Brit Bands. Okay. She's, she's a really nice artist. Dope. Um I like um, Katie Starr. Katie um, Starr. Um, there's a girl named Dreamica. I love the way she fucking dress. Like, I like the fact that it's so outgoing. Like, mm-hmm. I have to show you her page. Like, she's amazing. Please, yeah. Um, I like Wolf music. Um, he actually signed my wall. Um, he's he's pretty awesome. Um, there's another uh, artist. She did a song with uh, Lil Baby. Her name is Ricky Rich. She did a really yeah. Uh, somebody was telling me about that. Yeah, you need to get her on this bitch. She's a really nice wave. I mean, she well, not she lives in Atlanta now, but she's a really nice artist too as well. Yeah. But I listen to, like those are people that actually like on my phone. I listen to my boyfriend too. He has really nice music too. Hell yeah, his feature on that song was great. Mm-hmm. Stormy J, Stax, Khalil, Pretty oh, Shay, um, and my little brother Cheryl's um, dog. My little brother um, his name is uh, Double O and shit. He's uh he's pretty oh nice. double O. He's my little brother. That's your little brother. That's my step brother. Step brother. Yeah. Yeah, I know that it is. Yeah. I, shout out to I ain't gonna say a real name, but shout out to Day Day. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I think he um he's got some videos and shit, right? Yeah, he got videos. Yeah, with yeah. yeah that's my little brother. I think I think he dates or he used to dates one of my friends, Puerto really Rican. good friends. Puerto Rican. I, I don't know. I, I don't know the I don't person, know about girl. the Puerto Rico. She was pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Shout out to her. I remember your fucking the, name. Her, yeah, I don't know. It was I have a friend from Miami, and she, I think she was friends. And she was like, yeah, her boyfriend's a rapper, this and that. And I was like, oh, yeah, send me the shit. And I think it was him. Yeah, that I was nigga like, rock. all right, all right. I was like, yeah, this is kind of cool, he, he though. He didn't definitely grew from where I first left off from listening to my little brother. Like He was, he he was rapping like Reckless, though, right? Yeah, yeah. he, yeah. Okay, he rapped, making yeah. sure. No, he was good. Just making sure you know yeah. people. It, hey, being a rapper is dangerous. I'll let you yeah, know that he's right a, now. He's an awesome fucking individual, though. Hell yeah, small world. That's cool. Anyone else you gotta say? Um, that's everybody locally. I can really say that I like really listen to for real. Well, so tell me about this old Drake. <sighs> okay, so the old. Drake. Oh wait, before we go, and we're gonna do this again. Please, so you have your stuff. Not just on YouTube or SoundCloud. I saw your you got the you got the fucking uh what's it called turntable or whatever where you put all your links on there and you have your music on 
Spotify, Amazon Music, yep. even like Deezer, yep. like Tidal. I think Tidal and Deezer and Napster, you get paid the most off of mm-hmm. streams. And then uh, everything. It's on everything, right? Mm-hmm. So when you do that, is it is it complicated for you to push it a certain way? Because you have so many links to so many things. Do you like prioritize like title or prioritize soundcloud or anything like that or do you just try to i got them all in one link for a reason just so i can just have them all right there so you want to see the video click the link you want to listen to the song you want to stream it click the link everything right there in the link and then i got the link where it's not you gotta tap a link to get to this to link, link to get to, to this. Link. It's like boom. You wanna listen to my music? You gonna straight to Apple artists? You gonna straight to Jay's page? You gonna see my picture pop up? Go down to the four. You gonna literally see every fucking album, every single pop up. And it's cool because so you have some of the you have some of the same songs you could purchase a song or you can just hear it on SoundCloud. Yeah. And I think that's 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 the best. That's like where it should be at because that'll show your real supporters. You know Definitely. what I mean. It's like it's a dollar. Like give me a dollar, bro. You know, hell yeah. Okay, so what's this old Drake you're talking about? So, so, so they were, they're gonna want the old J eventually. Yeah. So what's the old Drake to you? Old Drake is to me is a night off Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. Ooh yeah. Hey there, um, pretty girl. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I like when I say old Drake, I mean like. When he had that wave, like before Lil Wayne said, you know what? I'm gonna let y'all come in here and be Barbies and and do whatever Barbies the fuck and y'all want and be Drizzy Drake instead it's of like young being, money, like real hard young money. Yeah, phase. like we about to turn you into fucking. It's over. Like we about to put you on to some whole nother type of wave, but you can still do what you want to do. Yeah. But you gonna be like this though, because this is the type of way that I'm trying to impact the community and the culture. I just feel like the old Drake is like fucking amazing. Like all of his old music, I could smoke a blunt and cry and beat somebody up, and now <laughs> all I want to do is turn the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Like, where the fuck did this new turn up Drake come from? Like, I miss being able to sit and chill and be like, "Damn, that bitch I shared them crayons with in third grade. What the fuck mm-hmm. happened to her? Like, yeah, I want to yeah. think of like I want to I want to get that wave, that vibe that I got from wave, like from the nigga Drake. But I ain't really like." I ain't got that in a while. Like, I was a Degrassi head, so I know how Drake rap, and I know how he is from seeing <laughs> him on Degrassi as playing Jimmy in a fucking wheelchair. Like, we used to watch that shit in health I class. I fucking love Degrassi. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, in the way that he was on there doing talent shows, it was just like, it's not the same Drake that's with Young Money. Mm-hmm. Like, when he was on Bad Rock, it just was like, um... I'm not used to this Drake. I'm used to so far gone Drake. I'm yeah, used to yeah. cause like the first time I ever Show even me heard a good time, Drake. It, you feel me? Like the last time I actually like well the first time I actually heard Drake, I was I was going through something. Like this is how much I actually like this nigga. Like mm-hmm. I was going through something. We was on our way to Columbus to drop my brother off at O State. He had a full ride through the um I guess the scholarship or whatever. Mm-hmm. He wanted to play football. He wanted to be a running back out there. He paid for the East Ninety Seventh Street Bulldogs here in Cleveland. Okay. And that nigga wanted to play football for O State. Full ride there. They provided the fucking uh, living off campus, everything. Like, it was oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah, like, yeah. I, a you black a, man. You get, you get a, you get a, a sports scholarship there. They're going to take care of you. Not only that is that my brother had a kid. So, all this stuff coming to you was a fucking great impact. Mm-hmm. When we were on our way out there, my brother played that whole fucking album to me. I was so fucking addicted to the point where I was like, I need this. This is around the time that, like... Where, like, the last album I really listened to all the way through, and I know this is crazy, but the last album I listened to all the way through before Drake was fucking Neo. Remember Neo with Love Making, I Love Making Love in the fucking Mirror? Like, yeah, no, I listened Neo's to that. Dope. I listened to his album all the way straight from back from seeing my mother in jail when she was staying in Kentucky, when she was incarcerated. And I mm-hmm. listened to that, and I sat in that back as a kid, like, damn, like, this shit really speaking to me. And that's the last part I actually say that, like, in the last album that really, like, spoke to me spoke to me so when i say i want the old drake other niggas like i want the old drake when he was making singing songs for the girls no nigga i like drake (laughs) because drake impacted me in a point where i can actually say like i appreciate that man music like 
that man make really good music when he's in his element. When yeah, I feel like he's yeah. out of his element and signed. Mm-hmm. He's a like I feel like now since he got OVO, he's Drake again. Like he's coming out like he's trying to hop on niggas shit. Like he on summer fucking Walker song mm-hmm. on Girls Need Love. He's, I was waiting always, for I was waiting for him to get that, on. Though. I was bro. I was waiting for this nigga to get on that. You hear me? When I first heard it, I'm like, bro, this is, sounds like Drake. When he came out with the song with Weekend, I'm like, this sound like Drake. Mm-hmm. This sound like some Drake shit. Like, oh, like that's what I'm saying. Like, I guess like when you with a label, you can have your own label. And when you have your own label, you get to become your own self again. And he just so driven now. Like, I get that. That man doing so many things. Like, he got his own clothing line now. Like, I always thought, like, Drake was going to blow up, like, off of Degrassi. Like, these niggas, man. That's good points. That nigga Drake raw as fuck. He's playing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the old Drake. I remember, I remember, um, when did I know... I remember Drake had this song. He had a song with fucking Mickey Fax. Remember Mickey Fax? Nah, Mickey Fax came out with like Wiz and Currency and all them dudes really in Mac Miller when they first came out, when they were really popping. He, he was part of that group. And Charles Hamilton and them and Asher Roth. Mm-hmm. He came out with them. He had a song with Mickey Fax. Remember the Gym Class Heroes? Yeah. With the rapper from there, Travis McCoy. He had a okay. song with those two. And Drake used to rep something called like ATF. Or some, I think, group he was trying to put out back in the day. Mm-hmm. And that was like the So Far Gone, the October's very own days. You know, when he rapped over the um, the Alicia Keys, uh, Unbreakable. Like, he rapped on that. And that shit was like, a, you're not ready for my wardrobe. Uh, I blow the fee for some, I don't know, f- four shows or something like that. That shit was crazy. But I remember when I heard that shit and the scale of his songs, I was like, man, this dude's about to be, like, crazy famous, though, like, and then he started doing Shuffle Wayne, and I'm like, this dude's about to be huge, like, huge, and especially from, like, him being kind of, like, a burb dude, mm-hmm. to being able to, like, have songs with people like The Game or YG, and then to have songs with The Weeknd or someone like that, like, his balance is pretty spectacular, man, it's kind of unfortunate that he's not from America, you know? We can't, like, really call them ours. I ain't saying nobody not from America. They said that 21 Savage was from Atlanta, and that nigga from a whole other place. He is born somewhere. That's like us being like, oh, she ain't from Cleveland. She's from that's Cali. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. So you never know. That shit died out real quick. It did. Because they was like, yo. This is me, Atlanta. Shut up. <laughs> they was like, yeah. We, we, we rode that for, like, two weeks. So where do you get your uh, your hip hop news and like shit at? Like where do you, who do you go look at that'll like tell you what's going on? Channels or um, like DJ Academics. He's been kind of like um, not doing it as Shade much. Room? Shade Room, yeah, okay. Cause even though they throw a lot of shade, I I still feel like they put out good content where they let you at least know what the fuck is going on when nigga sales don't go exactly how they supposed to. I go to their page. Mm. Probably look into that. Yeah, you, I, ain't I don't care. Them, but I don't I care about that shit. Yeah, I go in there like every now Share, and then. Sales and mean. look. Yeah, no, I do. I need to know what the fuck is going on as an artist. Like, I need to know what's going on with sales. I need to know what's going on as far as the business standpoint. I need to know who flopped, who who making more sales than I'm making. I need to know locally who make more sales. I need to know where it was going on. I'm cool. I need to know what's going on. I need to know all of that. So yeah, I I have to know. Why are sales so important? Sales aren't important. I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> as far as we're looking at somebody important. else. Well, to somebody else, it's probably important because they probably get paid too. <laughs> sales is important because I need we need to know. I need to know who listens to my shit, who's streaming my shit, where are they streaming it, how many people are streaming it, how much money I'm getting back from these people, how many percentage am I getting back? I look into that. Every artist that I have ran into and they say that they do music, I always ask them, are you fucking, do you got copyrights to all your music? Are you being my register? Or do you, do you have anything? And that as well, like, do you have any of these things? Where's your music streaming? Are you getting any royalties back from it? Mm-hmm. I need to know this thing because I need to know who the fuck I'm talking to before I can be able to take you serious. Because if you're not serious about like how I'm serious, then there's no conversation at this point. There's no point of us to continue the conversation. There's a point of us to 
to continue this this anything like there's no point of this consultation continuing because mm. you're not serious about your craft i'm serious about what the fuck i want i'm not working again to say that i'm getting everything that i want and what i deserve and paying my bills and running this light and using this wi-fi for this internet and everything <laughs> like I'm, I'm paying this out of pocket so when other people seem like they're not serious about it i take it to heart i take it completely to heart because i feel like they can do a little bit better when it comes to like being up on a sales that's true it's very true so explain to people um about uh about the um about uh the importance of uh bmi or ascap or licensing your music Uh, can you please explain the importance of that of signing up for something like that um the fact that you can get like royalties back from it and the fact that you can see who's actually streaming it and see where you are as an artist Mm -hmm. i think that it it helps out a lot to make sure that you have copyrights to your music it is it's like what if you what if you have that hit song and you're not even set up at that point someone has to come in and like fuck you right and then not to mention not to mention on um youtube you need um copyrights as well because i've realized that that bitch ass nigga in the beginning we were talking about the rap beef you would have (laughs) never been able to take my idea because if i had copyrights too that would have never fucking happened you have to go after him though wouldn't you yeah, that's it. Costs thing a lot too. of money, though. Yeah, and that's how I'm just like. Mm. But at the same time, it's as an artist. These are things that me as an artist too that I feel to like keep up on. Have a you know a stable ground where I can say, hey, this is this is my shit. Like, cause for my a while, shit. like it took a while for me to actually realize that you can actually like a lot of artists don't want to take this in consideration. But it's a lot of information that I'm giving out right now, like. With BMI or ASCAP, you can actually um, put your um, your shows that you do as well mm-hmm. on um, on there and get paid for these little, oh, well, I showed up and it was only 15 people. Well, 15 people can get you $5. Yep. Little do you know. Um, and if tell you keep them, building them. on those, I'm telling them, listen, I have to. And if you keep building on that five dollars and five dollars shit she'll have damn near a hundred and thirty dollars that's yeah that's you never know nothing. you never know within a couple of shows you already got damn near a thousand dollars you never know and then depending on where the venue is just because it's a small showcase if you do a show and they can say yeah well, you about to open up for prime example one of my favorite rappers Devin the dude is gonna be here at the grog shop um, Ultimate smoker rapper, and I'm going to that shit. I don't give a fuck if the ticket's seventy five dollars. You hear me? I'm mm-hmm. going. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, like, if you go and if anybody Nick snaps, um, I heard you on one hundred and seven point nine. Nick snaps. If you're going, I would say throw that shit on there because if you oh applesauce, I don't really know about him. Little applesauce. Uh-uh. He's a um he's a rapper as well. He's really he's a fucking rocker. Fucking amazing kid amazing nice following i like what he put in out i just personally think that if i was on there too as well like i was saying about the royalties yes they could really like take that as consideration because if you're doing a show with Devin the dude you know how much money you can get back from that you're not gonna get as much as Devin the dude you know oh you're not gonna get as much as like Devin the dude is getting for you paying you see what i'm saying you're not well, getting, yeah you're not getting ten thousand a show yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're going to at least get about $100, though, if you put hey. that shit on BMI. But if you're not BMI registered, you're not getting nothing. Mm-hmm. Every, artist, every artist is is registered somehow through mm-hmm. a label or through through some type of company that can be able to prioritize you as an artist yep. and have all your music so you can have all your streams and sales back. Yeah, you need someone to do all that fucking desk work, pretty much. And it's great. It's great that people could just sign up for that now and and pretty much handle their own business. It'll probably get to a point for you where you can't do all of it. But at this point, like it's good that they give they give people a chance, you know, so you can really uh, you can really get into partnerships and not have to, you know, rely on someone and and take those big L's the first couple of years, you know. So that's great. Thank you for answering that. Yeah, so make sure you, uh, if you're doing any, even if you're doing podcasting, like even I'm with BMI, you know, just for shit like that, if I write a song or work on something, you know, so make sure you sign up for that shit. So damn, 
So what are some of your goals um, for this summer? Um, goals for this summer is just putting out more videos. Mm. More summertime videos. More visuals. Yep. For the people to see. Yep. You got ideas? Um, like I said, the one that I'm uh, planning on plotting against is in two weeks. Mm-hmm. So. You can drop that okay. disc record. The video and shit, all your, you and all your, you know, all your niggas and shit. I, I got a diss, I got a diss song because, like I was saying, like me and the guy I talked to, that song Shark Bait, mm -hmm. me and him were beefing around that time. He has a thing called Shark Squad. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, um, I made Shark Bait so I can be able to diss him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, you got him, huh? You got him good, huh? He made a, yeah, he made a song about light skinned females. Yeah, so, and of course, that, that did more numbers than mine, because of course, a light-skinned female, it's been taught that we break hearts, but his his did what it was supposed to do, but for the most part, shark bait was, yeah, that was like my model menu, like one of my, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's cool. I, ho I hope you do that. Give us like, give us like four videos this summer, at least, you know? Definitely. I only got three now, so. Where phone's coming soon. Mm-hmm. So where can everybody and anybody find you to hear your stuff? Um, well, you can go on SoundCloud. Um Wave God. So it's Wave God all together with J I and um on Instagram, I'm Name J, and of course we just stayed on here. I guess that's my name now. So, name J, yeah, yeah that might so, that might be it. <laughs> so, so Name J is my name on Instagram, and that's N A M E J A I. Definitely. So if you look me up on there, um, you'll What's find there? um Twitter. It's um with an S, so it's Names mm -hmm. J. So it's names with an underscore J A I. Okay. And yeah, I'm on Twitter. Um, I'm not on Facebook. Um, and music can be streamed um, all over the fucking place. Like yep. I'm even on Pandora now. I just found out. So um, I'm even on Instagram Story. So if you wanna oh, like really? ever like make a little cute little video or you know. Make a video smoking or yeah. anything. And just, like shout, and just shout that name J right. out. Make sure you tag that while you're doing definitely, that. Definitely, definitely. Damn. Well, this is uh this is this is number eighteen for the low road. Is there anything else you have to say before we go? Shout out to everybody that is going to listen to this and mm -hmm. catch this wave. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, and the album is in August. J Bird. Jay Bird, that's the whole that's the whole album in August. Alright? Yeah. Alright, thank you. Eight to go.